Hey folks, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to change a bit the subject and we are going to talk about Docker. The first thing that I want to, to mention is that Docker Inc. is the company itself and Docker is a project or a software project which manage containers. So obviously we are going to talk about Docker, the, the project, but I want to make that difference because uh, I, I thought that was important. Uh, but I just mentioned about container. So what is a container? Well, a container is a package, a software package that contains all the necessary things to run an application which can be all the libraries, all the modules, all the binaries, everything. This container will will hold all the necessary things to run certain application without any other intervention. So this is very powerful because it is very flexible. If you have a container which is your application, which contains everything that it needs, then you can move through all the systems you have and the application will run exactly the same that in your local because you created your, your container locally and it works fine, but you will don't have the problem that you say it is working in my local, but it's not working in production, or it's not working in the platform. This will not be the case because the the container will have the same. This is very, very good option to, to develop an application. Okay. Uh, most of the people is talking about Docker because uh, from years ago, it became very popular because all of the things, all of the features that it offers, uh, let's say the, the Docker file is very simple to understand. It has many options to control, the port, the volumes, and so on. We will discuss about this later in, in another video. But I like to mention that it's very powerful and very very popular for this for these features. But it is not the only option to use containers. There are many actually. Uh, we we can find Rocket, Rocket containers. We can find Background, which can be used for this as well. LXC is another one, which is a Linux container. Uh, we have Mesos Containerizer. This is from Apache. And also we have OpenShift from Red Hat. So as you can see, we have another options to use containers and not use Docker. But it is <laughs> it is the most popular, at least uh, in the places that, that I, I've been working on. So, okay, we are going to talk about Docker, obviously. But before that, I'd like to mention what are the differences between containers and virtual machines. Some people can say those are the same or are closely the same. And yes, almost. <laughs> but here in this image that I liked, uh, it will depict all the differences and the, the most important, as you can see, is the guest operating system. But let's talk about the infrastructure first. Infrastructure is the, the hardware itself where the, the host system is running. It can be Windows, it can be Linux. But we have the, the bare metal and above on that we have the, the system. And after that, in a higher level, we have in virtual machines, we have the hypervisor. In this case, VMware, VirtualBox, or any other hypervisor or, or common common software to create virtual machines will offer a hypervisor to handle all the virtual machines you want to create. In the case of the containers, especially in Docker, we have the Docker daemon. 
this daemon is the process that will handle all the interaction with the containers and will manage all the resources. A special and very important thing in containers is the isolation, isolation level about the resources. You can use uh, control groups, which is are from Linux, to to restrict the 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 RAM memory, the CPU, the network. All of these resources are very important from the bare metal hardware that you have, and it's a good practice to limit or to set a, a threshold for those resources to avoid any performance issues. So Docker will offer that as well. But going back to the differences, we can see that in the virtual machines above the hypervisor, we have the guest operating system for each application. Um, obviously, by in running in that guest operating system, we have the binaries, we have the libraries that will help the application to run. But uh, a key key feature here is that every virtual machine will have a, a operating system. This is a, uh, is a thing that it will increase the, the size of the virtual machine of the hard drive for that virtual machine uh, about two, three gigabytes because it has the operating system. And a difference with, uh, with the Docker containers it will not have the operating system, so it can create a very lightweight containers which can go from so a few uh, megabytes to let's say a, a gigabyte. But the most common is the 100 to 200 megabytes. So it is very important to say that. Also, this will help if you are building microservices to have a light container to, to do so, it will be a good improvement. Also, another thing that that is very, very helpful for this, let's say you have a cluster which, which has a, a master and a slave, both containers, and you are getting more and more requests in your application that you will need more containers to handle all the traffic. So you need or you only can uh, start more, co more containers to join to the cluster. This, this will be very easily and fast because the containers are, are very, um, are not big. Okay. Well, these were the basics for Docker. Uh, I'll explain more in later videos. But for now, I wanted to install Docker in my my local system, which is a CentOS 7. So let's go and install it. I'm going to use the terminal. Let me maximize it. I'm going to do this. Okay, so the zoom install Docker. I'm going to install Docker. It's asking me for my password. Okay, it will. Uh, as you can see, it will install only 18 megabytes. It's very, very less. And we will have uh, after the the binary is downloaded and it will be uncompressed. We will have. 65 megabytes so i'm going to install it and i'm going to pause the video and resume once done okay it just finished so let's verify that it that is running this had a typo here system ctl status docker Okay, as you can see, the service is disabled at the moment, so I'm going to start it. Start will prompt for my password. Okay. Let me check the status again. As you can see, it's now active and running. So 
let me check the version okay it's just installed the 1.30.1 and the api version 1.26 okay let me try to see if anything is running it shouldn't be docker ps oh i have a problem because uh, i don't have permissions with my current user so i'm going to become root i'm going to repeat the command docker ps as you can see the error is gone and obviously i don't have any container running at the moment so the output is clean it's just showing me the the header for all the columns but but um, by doing this we can see that docker is correctly installed in my system okay this is all for this video i hope you enjoy it please subscribe to the channel and you can suggest more topics and we will see more about docker in in later videos please stay tuned thanks